Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. All right, welcome back from that break. Now, access to sufficient amounts of safe food is key to sustaining life and promoting good health. Foodborne illnesses are usually infectious or toxic in nature and often invisible to the plain eye caused by bacteria, viruses, parasites or chemical substances entering the body through contaminated food or water. Now, we'll be talking about this uh, on the program today, food safety, uh, which has a critical role in assuring that food stays safe at every stage of the food chain, uh, from production to harvest, processing, storage, distribution, all the way to preparation and consumption. Now, with an estimated 600 million cases of foodborne illnesses annually, unsafe food is a threat to human health and economies, uh, disproportionately, disproportionately affecting vulnerable and marginalized people, especially women and children populations. Now, it is in realization of this that the United Nations set aside today as World Food Safety Day with the theme of World Food Safety day in 2023. Now we have joining us virtually Dr. Zano Hassan Maikaswa. Uh, he is uh, uh, agricultural, he's an agro agronomist and also agricultural commodities trade expert. Uh, he'll be talking to us uh, about this. Uh, he's the MD of the Farm Fields Agro Allied Services. Uh, he's joined by Stephen Ame, an environmental health uh, officer with Oki Nigeria Limited, and they'll be talking to us about this subject. Thank you so much for joining us on Daybreak. This Good morning. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> Happy to be here. All yeah. right. Now, to begin with you, uh, Stephen, uh, today is a very critical day. If you look at some of the issues that I raised in the introduction about foodborne diseases, uh, here in Nigeria, we are not immune to that. Uh, there's a recent trend about uh, fruits, how chemicals are being used, you know, to either ripen fruits mm -hmm. or to either preserve or to enhance certain kinds of, of foods that we consume. How bad is the situation uh, for us in Nigeria? How critical is the issue of food safety for us here in Nigeria? Yeah, like you rightly mentioned in your introduction, uh, over 600 million cases of food poisoning. But out of that, over 400,000 persons die every year annually um, all over the world. Uh, that calls for serious concern about um, food safety. Uh, in our country, Nigeria, uh, the situation is not very good. Uh, we're having serious problem of food safety, uh, not just um, in the farms, or, but one area why I'm here trying to talk about this on this World Food Safety Day is even in the manufacturing industry, mm. um, beverage uh, industry, for example. Good manufacturing practices um, is not being undertaken. And yesterday was just the World Pest Day. Mm. Uh, it's one aspect uh, most people don't talk about, but it's very critical when you talk about food safety. Mm. Um, production of beverage is going on, and you find um, roach in cockroach in a bottle of the product. Mm. These are mass production, mm. okay? Mm. And there you require just zero tolerance of mm. pests. Mm. There are places where, um, if I find uh, a fly outside mm. this facility, mm. they won't be called for serious, mm. uh, they won't be much concerned about mm. it. But if I find a fly, a bug, in the production industry, there's a call mm. for Because I mean, if mm. you want to get a bottle of mm. beverage, for example, and you find something in it, you're mm. going to, so uh, exactly, that and, and I suppose that brings up regulatory questions, isn't yeah. it? Uh, so what what is the point that we need to make on a day like this, especially if we're supposed to reiterate the significance of the safety of the foods we eat, right? Because uh, that preserves uh, the, the 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 quality of our lives and also maintains uh, our well-being. What 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 is the missing link here? What 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 are we not doing properly to ensure? whether it's the factories and the production lines yeah. or the delivery process or the preservers, uh, the preservation practices and things like that. What is missing, in your view, from uh, the common practices here in the country? I think uh, standard practices, we are cutting corners. Uh, we need to put in place standard practices. Uh, quality assurance managers, quality control managers in these facilities need to be up and doing. Mm. 
mm. is very important mm. because you have chains of production. Mm. And every one of that production, from delivery of raw materials, for example, from the farm to the production um, houses, you need to follow all these measures. Mm. Uh, I would just still, I, I still want to help on, on the pest control. We're just coming from the heels of the pest control celebrated yesterday. Mm. Um, if you don't put in place regular pest control in your facility, for example, mm. you'll be prone not just to mosquito bites. We're concerned about mosquito bites, mm. but uh, I just mentioned uh, contamination by a pest itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this first, uh, the, the, the managers need to be up and doing. Then you mentioned regulatory um, agencies. Mm. Okay, the regulators need to monitor, uh, document facts, and inspect, mm. and go around facilities and know what is going on there. We have serious sanitation problem that could lead to contaminant food poisoning mm. too. Okay, mm. not just the bacteria and viruses uh, that we talk about. Mm. The vi bacteria and viruses come from these sources, obviously. Okay, from the water, from the poor sanitations we have mm. around our facilities, mm. and we can bring some of these things to home too. Okay. Our parents and everybody need to be cautious of, of how Personal food is hygiene. prepared, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, food industries, mm -hmm. uh, the hotels, the restaurants. I mean, we need to go back even to uh, the market places. I mean, if you go to see how Gary has stores and you go to buy the next day, you, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. go to one of these markets um, when the market is closed in the evening and see what pests, for example. I'm, I would like talking about the pest angle because I've just been mm. obsessed with that mm. coming from yesterday. Mm. You go to the market in the evening and see what is happening. Rodents, mm. flies, mm. Uh, all sorts of big uh, mm. pests mm. you could talk about. Mm. So yep. uh, you'll be, you, you don't really want to buy food the next yep. day. So mm. we need to do, uh, the regulators need to monitor and find out all these measures are being put in place, have been done. Mm. Is pest control done? Is sanitation done? Yeah. Okay, are you washing the food before you eat them, your fruits yeah. and the rest of them? Those are the things we need to put. So everybody needs to be, and the government needs to, the orientation agencies need to highlight people, sensitize people on the dangers. On a day like this, I mean, putting up a program like this to talk about this yeah. is yeah, something right. too. Yeah. Well, let's go to our virtual guest, Dr. Zanao, uh, who is joining us virtually. Well, doctor, uh, welcome to the program once again. Well, you know, there's a popular saying here in Nigeria uh, and uh, in our local parlance, and I would like to say that in Pijing. They say disease, no, they kill African man. That's mm -hmm. a common saying with our people. But every now and then, you hear stories like family of five consume so and so and they died uh, and so on. You know, you hear such stories all the time. And that's arising from food poisoning and you know things like that how seriously are we really taking these issues here in this part of the world yeah thank you so much for having me this morning and just a bit of correction uh, i'm not uh, a doctor um i'm an agronomist by training you know practice um, so talking about the um, Food poisoning, especially uh, in homes or around us, it's a very, very big issue. Uh, if you remember back memory lane, there were times when you, in the southwest, you will hear people who come for a party, you know, a lot of them having issues uh, with food poisoning. I, I had cases where a lot of people died because they attended a party. Uh, then we used to have issues around bean storage. You know, beans is produced in the north, uh, stored in the north, and transported to the south, southwest particularly, where we have huge consumption of beans, and then that resulted in a lot of poisoning. Uh, then now that had to um, intervene to be able to educate our uh, dealers, processors, sorry, dealers and farmers on how best to store uh, beans. Uh, to be able to control how they use pesticides to be able to also stop this to reduce the impact. Now, but much more, uh, when you talk about food poisoning, uh, my other colleague guest in the studio is talking about the industrial practices. Uh, majority of the food we consume does not pass through those uh, industrial uh, processes, right? Uh, there are only packaged foods that pass through and those ones have standards and regulations that have been put in place to help in curtailing them. Now that, you know, do a lot of work in ensuring that they meet up with standards even though there are sharp practices. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the food we consume do not pass through those processes. For example, the alebo cassava that we consume, uh, they peel it, they wash it in dirty water, 
they, they drive it by the roadside, you know, every car that is passing is putting doors, smoke and everything, you know, and then from there they pack it, they bag it, and then they, you know, take it to the mill and grind it. And then people buy and, and consume. Uh, you look at our meat processing, um, more than 90% of our meat processing is the one that you see uh, in the market, you know, uh, the water they use in even cleaning the meat, the place they do the slaughtering, you know, the, the place they use in, in selling, even when they, they are not able to sell, how do they store that meat before they are able to sell it and everything? You discover that you bought meat that has started getting rotten and there is nothing you can do about it. You can't complain. You can't charge anybody to court for that. So we have this kind of practices over the years. When you look at also the fruits, uh, a lot of food, fruits vendors, um, try to find an easier way of ensuring that they have speedy ripening of their uh, of their fruits in order to be able to sell it in the market. Now, all this impact on food. Recently, I, was, I watched a video of a fruit vendor who was using water, water water to be able to clean his fruits. Uh, I will store the food inside 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 the water water before he will remove it, and then in order to uh, some cool uh, generate some cool effect like refrigerating so that the heat does not spoil the, 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 the food. So these are the unregulated food that is consumed by the majority of Nigerians. And attention has not been drawn to those areas. And I think that these are the areas that we need to really put eye on yeah. and possibly put um, ensure standards are, are, are put in place. Uh, this year's theme is talking about food standards and saving lives. So clearly it is something th where you can establish a nexus. If you don't have certain standards, there's a very good chance that the food you consume could actually uh, threaten your life. Give me an understanding of what you think is at the heart of the issue here. Because while there is an orientation deficit on one hand, when I just feel like if I buy the fruits, I take them home, I can wash the dirt off, I can wash the germs off, or if I buy the meat, I can boil it, I can take whatever poison uh, out of it. Uh, on the other hand, you also have uh, a deficit of regulatory standards and practices. As, as you said, uh, we patronize mostly local traders who put these things on the roadsides or for sale. And, and, I, and I dare say that most people, uh, you know, don't buy some of these products from, you know, uh, dealers at the supermarket or things like that. So how do, we, how do we regulate an unregulated space such as Nigeria's food industry, for instance? Because NAFDAQ, as much as it's doing a great job, uh, you know, regulating some of the uh, areas, it does have limited capacity to do all of the uh, regulation that is needed. Yes, so basically, um, Nigeria, I think just recently, uh, maybe the last year or some two years back, uh, the National Food Safety Bill was signed into law, no, not bill, national food policy, national food policy. Uh, this national food policy had been on the table for many years. Um, uh, we have NGOs, civil societies that have been working on that, uh, but it has not been um, uh, accepted by the federal government. But I think recently it has been uh, accepted by the federal government. Um, or you know, the food policy are supposed to be implemented in states. And apart from NAVDA, I think that we need to step down uh, issues of food policy uh, within the states because these are the people who are mostly impacted by whatever food um, poisoning or food hygiene practices that are supposed to be concerned about. Uh, I think that every state needs to have that food policy in place. When you have the food policy in place, how do you begin to implement that? Do we need to have um, state agencies that are responsible uh, for food hygiene uh, to ensure that the processes that brings this food to our tables are um, well done? Uh, how do we also step down the process of uh, setting standards for our market traders, uh, our dealers, uh, in, in, to ensure that they, they observe certain hygienic standards. If they don't, who is supposed to be blamed, right? Um, for example, our abattoirs, uh, there are days when you can't slaughter animal anywhere. Uh, it has to be in the abattoir. And then the veterinary 
um, doctor has to certify the animal to be fit for consumption. If there are issues, the veterinary doctor uh, raises those concerns in order to ensure that zoonotic diseases are not passed to the general public. Today, uh, I have seen even within Abuja, where um, uh, these um, meat sellers go to the bush, they buy the meat there, they slaughter it there, and then they transport it to just start selling without anybody inspecting that. So the issue of having food policies across the states and then having an agencies that are within the states and also within the local governments that should be able to properly sensitize people, also properly train and set standards Right. We also look at uh, uh, our food uh, transporting system. The way we transport animals, for example, the way you, you, we transport even vegetables from the farms to the market, the way we transport from uh, the way tomatoes, for example, are being transported on baskets, start, start on each other, and you you transporting from Kano, for example, to Lagos, and the truck spends seven days on the road, and then you have about forty percent of that being wasted. Been rotting, even the rotten ones are being bought over by restaurants. Uh, people grind it and then they still use it, you know, and nobody is checking that. I think that government uh, must begin to pay attention to those kind of um, scenarios in order to ensure that um, we set standards for those categories of people because the standard at the moment is only set for processing. As long as your, your product is not going to be on the supermarket shelf. We 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 have that number. If you don't have issues with that, you are fine, right? Yeah. But we know that majority of Nigerians don't go to those supermarkets, and so they they, they cut off NAVDAC from from ensuring that those standards are being obeyed. All right, you know, um, Stephen, it's quite complicating, really, if you look at the environment here in Nigeria, infrastructure-wise. You know, correct. Uh, if you look at issue of road networks, transportation. Uh, storage facility. Storage facility for farmers moving these products from the farms to the point of sale and the rest of them. When you look at all these issues, it kind of complicates these issues. And uh, say, for instance, for perishable items, uh, tomatoes, uh, tatasi, and the rest of them, peppers, mm, yeah. you know, which is uh, mm. the official mm. name in English. Now, when you look about, think about these things, what's the best approach to it in terms of getting it right? How do we get to the local farmer? And uh, because, I mean, these are people that are likely to lose if, yeah. if they don't, you know, move this product to wherever as soon as possible. And without the storage facilities and the rest, they are compelled to now look at other ways of preserving this, you know, products or crops, you know, in order that they don't lose their money. So there's a profit on one hand to be made, and then on the other hand, you do not have that infrastructure to make sure that you don't run at loss. You know, uh, he mentioned uh, transport uh, problem, but I would like to start uh, with education. Uh, we need to educate these people, uh, our local farmers, I mean people in the grassroots. They need to be in business, they need to make some money, uh, but the facilities are not available. First, they need to understand that uh, this food needs to be safe for you to be in business. People need to consume this thing and keep consuming it for you to be in business. And all you need to do, that conscious thing needs to be there. Uh, they need to understand that food needs to be saved. That is very important. Uh, however, we're, whatever way we're going to do to make them understand that, I think everybody needs to be uh, doing that. Mm -hmm. The other aspect I would like to mention, government needs to come in to provide facility, make facility available for people, uh, marketplaces. I mean, you don't need to big the, build supermarkets. But if you have a market facility or with structures that uh, people can easily assess and have their goods stored properly, I mean, freezing facilities, we'll talk about lighting, power supply, mm -hmm. these are the things we need to be in these simple uh, market facilities to help have safety. Because we're talking about perishable uh, uh, mm -hmm. items, food. If you don't have power, one of the problems we have underneath is power, transportation, all these things. So government needs to come in one way or the other to see that these things are there. Road mm -hmm. transport, making transportation easy. I mean, today you are talking about uh, uh, the, the fair uh, hike, mm -hmm. subsidy remover, and prices of transportation mm -hmm. have gone very high. So government needs to be, the government can just provide uh, vehicles, I mean, mm -hmm. or facility, get in place people who can help to ease transportation mm -hmm. for farmers. Mm -hmm. 
and that will make things very easy for people to, um, to do. That will help because we can keep talking about food safety, food safety, do this, do that, but mm. the concrete measures, things need to be put in place to enhance the safety. How challenging yeah. is mm. this for, say, NAVDAC, for instance? Because we talk about NAVDAC mostly when we talk about pharmaceuticals, so when we talk yeah. about you know, registering mm. of products, products. Uh, to get the certified NAVDAC yeah. uh, numbers. You know. So you talk about that in a conventional or in a formal yes, set setting. of sort of in urban centers and the rest. But here we are, you may have to now go deeper at the sub-national level in the villages, in and that the is where the majority of where our the food farmers are, come from. You know exactly. So, what's the presence of NAVDAC in such places, this, and this is, what could NAVDAC do, you know, in in such instances? For me, it's not just going to be NAVDAC. Yeah. Uh, there are other sister regulatory agencies that could work together with NAVDAC. Yeah. NAVDAC, I mean, uh, for example, let me just give you a scenario. In this place you're talking about, even in Abuja here, I mean, the federal capital territory, you have. Uh, food vendors, people yeah. who sell food by uh, yeah, the, the roadside. The bookers, the canteens. Right. Okay, it would be very difficult for NAVDAC to go and start doing regulation there. I mean, environmental agencies have to be doing um, mm. some uh, regulation mm. there, catching mm. enforcement mm. to get them off that place to start with. Mm. Okay, but that is not the solution to the problem here. Yeah. The problem is, for me, I say, is education. Educating mm. those where, the, where this, the person doing that, mm. that if you're exposing this food substance to the elements, to mm. sun, to dust, to other... It's not going to be good for one's health and even for mm. your health. Mm. And like I mentioned, I like to reiterate that point. Somebody needs to eat something good to come and eat again. If mm. not, you are, they need to know that you are literally uh, offering somebody a poisonous substance when you mm. expose them to all this material. So mm. uh, not just NAVDAC, uh, we have an Environmental Health Council of Nigeria, mm. Environmental Health Officers. Mm. That structure is very important to work with NAVDAC. Uh, because these are people who enforce these environmental yeah. issues. I mean, all over the which country. Is, so, which, have them in all local which is, governments. Yeah. Uh, which is a very important very, point to make. Very, but there, there is also the issue of scaling. For one, you talk about the, envi the, the environmental agency and what, it, what it's been doing, especially with the food industry, where it goes across restaurants, bookers, and canteens across the country to check if they're meeting certain uh, Standard. standards as far as, you know, uh, delivering their services are, are concerned. But more often than not, they're only interested in the levies they get from the restaurants. So as long as they're paying, they can overlook the dirty environment or just, you know, give them a, a pat on the hand, a little slap on the wrist and say, listen, you can do better than this. And that's the end of the story. We don't hear restaurants being shut down because of, you know, failing to meet certain standards. And it brings up, up the issue of, of, of scaling. Is the scale of the problem outweighing the scale of the solution? Do we have enough manpower to police all of these uh, establishments that we have across the country? And I think the answer is very obvious. We have a gap in proper regulation, actually. Uh, be it NAFDAC, uh, other regulatory agencies, our environmental protection agencies, when they come to regulate or monitor for issues of environment or food safety, what do they look out for? That's a question. Like you rightly mentioned, they're more concerned about certification mm. and levies, mm. and more, have you paid the money, mm. and all that. Um, local uh, government authorities, that's all they're concerned about. Mm. Mm. But what do we look out for in food safety? Okay, sanitation problem. If you get to a facility, you get to a, a production environment, you get to a supply, a supply chain, mm. sanitation problem. The transportation problem I'm talking about, how, it, how are the preservation issues? Mm. Okay, even documentation. Okay, it's very important. So all these are factors. So the regulators need to uh, look out for, do proper evaluation and monitoring, uh, not just to ask for monies, ask for levies, so mm -hmm. that you increase revenues. Uh, Why the, the, the main issue um, is just left uh, uncontrolled or managed. The main issue is not managed. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to, to make sure our food uh, are saved. And how do we do that? Ensuring that uh, sanitation problem, uh, they are free from microorganisms that affect us, mm. parasites and viruses you've mentioned, mm. they are free from pests, mm. okay, um, infestation, mm. and all these things. So these are the things that need to, these are the foods, these are the what we need. If we get rid of all these things, our food will be safe. Then we'll not talk about um, storage facilities mm. and transportation. And that is where I think the government mm. need to come in. So regulators need to play a great role, not just NAVDAC that I've just mentioned, mm. I mean NAVDAC food, uh, mm. like rightly mentioned, not just about uh, cosmetics and the rest of them, but 
uh, food. Food is very important. Mm -hmm. okay. So all right, let, let's to go know. to uh, Zanao, who is uh, there virtually also. Well, uh, we've seen a trend uh, in most of the urban centers. Specifically, let me talk about the Abuja, for instance. Earlier, we talked about chemicals that are used either for preservation or either for you know, ripening of fruits and the rest of them. How do you think we can limit access to some of these chemicals to these people? In what ways can we ensure that these chemicals do not get into the wrong hands? Okay, uh, so I think here, that is where now that plays um, a critical role um, in ensuring that, because by, by law, any chemical that is coming into this country, now that has a role in certifying and ensuring who is either importing it, who is using it, where are they moving it from, and where is it going? That is the sole responsibility of NAFTA. Whether it's a chemical that is used for processing of any other item, NAFTA has a role to know, to ensure who brings it into the country, or who is producing it and where, and if they are transporting it also. Now, this is very critical. Uh, there is, a chemical called carbide, uh, it's, it's used by welders. Um, you know, these welders that use gas, gas welding. Uh, it's, it's like a, a, a byproduct of that welding. That is used for, for ripening. And that can be commonly, you know, you can get it anywhere. You just need to go to a welder and you are able to get your carbide and, and go and uh, do your ripening. Now, how do we ensure that the, 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 the welder who accesses those chemicals for his own business, uh, the quantity he, ac he access, the waste he generates from there, which also can be used in food ripening, how do we ensure that it is properly accounted for, um, properly disposed? Do we have standards that suggest how those um, uh, carbide can be, can be used, can be also be disposed, and if he doesn't dispose them properly, uh, who is responsible to ensure that that he is either sanctioned or to be able to investigate how the people who are using it for ripening access that and who is the provider and can those uh, people be sanctioned. I think that that's the kind of level that NAVDA needs to proper, uh, probably you know, step down to be able to ensure that food safety is taken beyond uh, factories and industries, processing uh, centers, to be able to ensure that those ones that escape their normal route, how are they being tackled? So now that need to step up, not just at the national level, state, local government level, to be able to ensure that those... Okay, we seem to have lost. Yeah, we seem to have lost. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, th I think we can uh, bring the conversation back to the studio here before we get uh, Zano uh, back online. But I was just about to chip in the question around industry players, and I would love to have, you know, gotten his reaction because he is... Uh, okay, I, I think we have him back uh, online. Uh, Mr. Zano, if you can hear me, uh, the question I wanted to pose earlier okay. before the uh, disconnection was... Industry players, let's put the spotlight on industry players because a question was asked prior to the commencement of this conversation around how owners of poultry farms or fish farms or farms generally use certain chemicals that allows them to maximize uh, market profitability to increase their margins as far as profits are concerned. However, they're well aware that uh, it might compromise the standard and the quality of the food item or the product they put into the market where in most cases, people who own fish farms or poultry farms don't even eat their own product uh, as, as, as perhaps part of a principle because they know what they're putting in those uh, chickens and uh, fish uh, that they sell out to people. What are your thoughts about how much accountability industry players like you need to take uh, to not cut corners but uphold some of these standard practices? Yes, so uh, in the poultry and the fish uh, sector, especially for those who are involved in what we call dress, uh, dress chicken or selling uh, fresh, fresh um, uh, fish from the farms, uh, one of the biggest challenges they have is spoilage. Um, having to keep it fresh for a much longer time 
Um, so in order to do that, uh, I, I'm aware that formaldehyde, formaldehyde is used for preservation of uh, dead bodies. You know, it's also being used in the poultry industry. Now, how do those formaldehyde get out of the hospital from even the hospital is only supposed to be within the mortuary? How does it get out even into the market that some, you know, poultry um, um, business people are able to access that? That is an issue that also NAVDA need to investigate properly and ensure that that is not done. Uh, my colleague in the studio also mentioned the issue of education. We need to step up proper uh, awareness, both from, um, from the farmers' perspectives, from the business, that is the vendors, the retailers' perspective. How do they uh, get this um, um, uh, poultry meat or fish? How do they also store them? Well, how long can this stay without being, you know, being stored or being freezed, for example? How long can they stay outside? And then if those periods is passed, what should they do? Well, you know, in Nigeria, uh, even when you pass those periods and it gets to spoilage, they don't want to lose money. They would rather want to um, want to still find a way to sell it off. You know, in other advanced countries, you will discover that um, they will have to properly dispose level of okay. compensation for some of those kind of uh, All right. um, 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 systems. For, for the farmers and mm. others. Okay, Dana. Well, thank you so much. Well, um, Stephen, quickly, there are three stages identified here. The production stage of the food, the processing stage of the food, and then the stage where you distribute that. That Those are possible places of uh, stages of contamination mm. of those products. Are there traditional practices within these processes that you think are harmful and Nigerians and you know not just Nigerians but everyone watching could watch out for to you know avoid mm. so that you know food poisoning or contamination does not take place you know from the production um, stage we talk about let me start from you from the farm You're talking about uh, those stages mm. uh, early harvesting for example if you harvest your, your crops early at the right proper time, mm. um, it will reduce the time for spoilage, mm. right? To reduce time. So early harvesting is very important. These are, uh, that, is what, that is what any farmer can do uh, mm. naturally. Uh, and this is not a general rule for every crop, no, obviously. No, it's not a general rule okay. for every crop. I mean, you know, your, your maize, right? your, right. your beans. Mm. So, so if you don't leave them too late, I mean, mm. you have missed them on time. Mm. You are trying to ensure enhance food safety one way or the other because mm. by the time you, you harvest it late, before you get to the level of processing, mm. you're already reducing the yield, okay? You, get, you start getting um, the loss of the yield if, with late um, uh, harvesting. So mm. it's very critical for me that uh, aspect, mm. right from the farm, mm -hmm. when you get to the issue of, of processing these food substances, uh, that is where standard need to start. Uh, even going back to the, the farm and the production, the, there's a concept called integrated pest management, okay? Uh, that will help you to avoid even excess use of pesticide, okay. which will uh, actually uh, harm or contaminate the, the food substance. Most mm -hmm. of our, our food products uh, exported out of the country have uh, so much high concentration okay. of pesticide okay. in them. Okay. And okay. So, okay. so the issue of um, early harvesting, implementation of integrated pest management will help reduce some of these. Okay. Um, um, mm. Right. This sounds like, like one of those conversations where mm. you need to have on over and over because yeah. at the heart of all of it is education yeah. Yeah. and uh, education is a non-stop uh, process that could uh, actually add value to this conversation. Thank you so much Mr. Stephen for your insight on this conversation today. I yeah, appreciate thank you very for much for stopping me. Um, thank you. We pray we have a right. different substances around. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. Stephen Ame is an environmental health officer working with Oking Nigeria Limited and also joining us uh, virtually uh, is uh, a agronomist and agricultural commodities trade expert uh, Zanao Hassan Maikasua uh, of the Allied Services. Thank you so much for joining Agro Allied Services. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. All right, that's our show for today. In case you've missed, you can always catch up across all our social media platforms. I'm talking about Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, 
and the rest of them are also we're streaming live on YouTube 247. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. My name is Ayuba Ilya. Bye for now. Abdullah, I'm saying thank you for your time and company. We'll see you tomorrow.